And actually, we uh, started to talk about World Heritage you know, since the 80s, but it was in the 1990s where we kind of initiated you know, by bringing um, the UNESCO Cultural Advisor from Bangkok to, Pen to Penang. And then, uh, and then we also got Georgetown listed on World Monuments Fund. And then we have been lobbying the state government uh, since, since the 80s, actually. So our challenge is like to promote uh, cultural significance of individual buildings and also of areas and the city. And also to change the development paradigm and the tourism paradigm to convince government and investors of the economic value of heritage. So in fact, in uh, I think 1991, we invited Mrs. Pamela Lee to Penang. At that time, uh, you know, Penang government wasn't interested in heritage at all. So we said, look, Singapore is doing it, it must be a good idea. <laughs> and of course, they were doing it for tourism. But tourism is an argument that you can sell to the government you know, at that time. Uh, but now we almost regret that we use tourism because the uh, uh, other uh, impacts. Okay, so to build knowledge, legislation, institutions. So uh, this is, a, you, you remember we are a grassroots movement. So it's very difficult from the ground up to do this. So in a way, we in envy Singapore for having your planning framework, your regulatory framework, which we do not have. I mean, we have a very weak one. And, uh, you know, if you had, we had that kind of institutional, uh, strong institutions, I think we could have, we could protect a lot more. So uh, to build knowledge, legislation and institutions on how to, pro how the know-how to protect and preserve heritage, even that, you know, we have to really kind of think about it and then, talk to people and, you know, everything is from the bottom up. And then to foster identification with heritage among local people and youth, and then to create ownership and also transmit it to the next generation. So these are kind of like the five general challenges that we have. 